Um, we are going to go ahead and add a, yeah, let's add a third file. So I'm going to touch a third file, only this one I'm going to call file.power or something. So often when you have version control projects, you'll run a compiler, like or something, or you'll run Emacs, right? Emacs often will generate. So if I go to edit my, if I add another line to my readme, Uh, often Emacs will generate temporary files, right? When you save over something, it'll make a little tilde backup copy of it. Uh, often your compiler will make these dot out files, um, or you'll have like a program that makes a log file, like a dot log file. One of the things that we that you want to do when you're using version control is the point isn't to version control everything. The point is to version control all of the source files, which isn't always everything. So if you have a generated file, a file that's generated from your source files, so this would be like an object file, so like a .out file, or if you have like a compiled program, right? Like if I were compiling this to like my program, you don't actually want to version control the binary program, the compiled version. You only want to version control the files it took to build that. Um, you're not going to break anything by version controlling the actual program, but it's kind of redundant, right? Because the point is, you have all your source files, you can regenerate that file from them. And then keeping track of your changes in two places by version controlling that as well, I mean, it just gets messy. Um, so it's not considered good practice to version control anything but your raw source files. So log files the program spit out, you don't want to put under Git. Anything that is a compiled file, you don't want to put under Git. Um, those tend to be the big ones. So like when I'm writing LaTeX docs, I actually, the PDF file that it spits out, so like I have a program that generates my PDF files, I don't version control the PDF file itself. So the way to think about it is, you version control the input, you don't version control the output of pretty much anything you're doing, uh, would be considered best practice. There's a few exceptions to that rule, but generally Git, you want to focus on text-based input files that can then be used to generate everything else. Does that make sense? So the question then is, if I do, so let's pretend this file.out is something that got spit out by my compiler or something. This is a, this is not a source file, this is a generated file. Well, if I just run git status, git's going to want me, I mean, it's going to be on my untracked files list. I mean, and that's fine. I can just leave it there the whole time, but that gets kind of annoying, right? And if I start adding other files, it gets hard for me to see, well, do I just have to remember in my head which one of these are things I do want to commit and which ones are things that I don't? So Git has a way for you to tell it to ignore certain files, and then it will just stop asking you about them, and it won't put them under version control. So pretty much every Git directory, uh, or pretty much every Git program, or uh, any time you use a Git control directory, you'll have an additional file, so this is the Git folder, but you'll also have in here what we call a Git ignore file. So if you just create a file that needs to start with a dot, but the file name is dot git ignore, all lowercase, then this file essentially allows you to specify using pretty standard wildcard syntax any files that Git should just ignore, not even ask you about. Um, so a common thing to see in here is tilde, uh, so star tilde. So that's saying ignore all of my Emacs backup files, right? Like I don't want to version control my backup files, just the originals. Uh, you'll often see something like star dot out. Um, if I had a program, so when you compile a program, it doesn't normally have a file extension. So you just type in the name. So if I was compiling this to a program called like my program, I could just type in the name of the file there, so on and so forth. You can use comments in here. So it'll actually ignore any lines sticking with like, like normal bash syntax. It's going to ignore anything starting with a hash. So I can just call this, uh, you know, editor temp files. And then I could put down here, Compiler generated files. So if I want to make notes to myself and just kind of keep this organized, I can do that using standard common syntax like that. So if I now save this file and close it, so now if I do a git status, you'll notice my git ignore is here, but that dot out file that I had before is no longer on my list of untracked files. So it's important to note the git ignore file itself now actually becomes part of our repository and we will version control it as well. So when someone else gets a copy of our repository, they're also going to get a copy of our gitignore file. So let's go ahead and commit the gitignore file. 
Uh, so I mean, we're kind of recursively using git on its own files here. That's one of the things of git. So I'm going to do git add, dot and ignore, git commit dash m, and I'm going to say added a git ignore file. Cool. So now if I do a git status, we're back to a clean state. Well, not quite. I modified readme. So let's go ahead and commit my remote region change to readme. So this time I'm just going to use the shorthand. I'm going to use the dash a. So I'm skipping the add step, right? I could do git add readme, but I'm going to skip that and just use the dash a. That's going to automatically add anything in this list. And then I'm going to do the dash m and say added yada yada, right? I'm going to spell correct. All right. So we're back to a clean directory, but our dot out file isn't actually part of this git repository. It's just ignoring it, right? So I can do whatever I want to that file. Git's not going to care. I can delete it. It's not going to care, so on and so forth. And if I push this git repository to someone else, which we'll get to in a minute, anything in that ignore list is going to get left out. So like if I were pushing this up to GitHub and I looked at all the files on GitHub, this would not be included amongst them. So questions on git ignore files, how to use them, what they do? So git ignore actually works in a tree-based basis. So I'm in the root of my directory right now. And I have a dot .git ignore file here. So the contents of the, this dot .git ignore file is going to be applied to everything I make, right? So if I, I can make a subdirectory. Um, so let's call this like some subproject. And see the end of that. So that top level dot .git ignore file is still going to ignore something in here. So if I touch a file in here called, you know, test.out, so I'm telling it to ignore all .out files. So I have a test.out file inside this subdirectory right now, but if I do git status, it still says nothing to commit. Uh, I can actually add multiple .git ignore files. So I could add a second .git ignore file inside this directory. And then Git's going to basically read the top level one and then read the one inside this directory and just append them. So this is helpful. Sometimes you have files that you only want, like you want to ignore all PDF files, but not everywhere. You only want to ignore all the PDF files in or below this directory. So in that case, I would create a second docket ignore here, do star PDF. It's not going to affect anything in my top directory, but it will affect anything in this directory or down. So it's actually a pretty powerful concept that allows you to have, I mean, so if you have different parts of your code where some places you want to ignore all the log files, but maybe you have some documentation where the log file, you want copies of the log files, for example, so you want to ignore them over here, but not over here, it allows you to do that. So you can have more than one get ignore. They are hierarchical based upon the file tree, and they basically cascade down um, and append to each other wherever they are. So that top level get ignore, you normally find things like editor, temporary files, stuff you always want to ignore. Then kind of the more specific things you'll find in subdirectories that you only want to ignore it with reference to that subdirectory. Is there any way that if you have a git ignore in the top level directory, if you have something in the subdirectory of that type that you want it to not ignore, can you set that git ignore to override the upper level git ignore? I think so. I don't know how off the top of my head. Okay, I'll just um, avoid doing that. So there's actually some more advanced things you can do in the git ignore files. Like you can tell git ignore. I mean, one of the common tricks is sometimes you want to have like an empty directory as part of your project. By default, Git has no way of doing that because Git works on files, not directories. So it only saves a directory if you're Git controlling a file inside of it. So making an empty directory part of your repo is requires actually a little bit of trickery. Um, the reason you would want to do that is like if you have a make file that dumps all the output into like a build directory, you want to, that to be part of the project because otherwise your make file is going to fail. But it, doesn't normally have anything in it because the only stuff in it is stuff that gets automatically generated. So the way you get around that is you put actually a dot get ignore file inside that directory, and there's a way to tell the got dot get ignore file to basically ignore everything in the directory except itself. So that's how you can add essentially an empty directory to get. Um, so there are some of those more advanced things you can do with get ignores. I mean, if you Google it, I'm sure you can figure out. The general response to your question though would be. Don't go doing things like that, right? I mean, it's a tree structure for a reason. Exploit it. Don't try to have exceptions because, yes, while you may be able to do it, it's going to turn into a clusterfuck of not knowing what's going on where, right? So the correct solution to that would be go back to the top level directory, remove the thing you don't want, 
re-add it in all of the sister directories to your own, but then don't add it in your own if you actually don't want to ignore those things there. The only things on the top level get ignored is stuff you actually want to ignore everywhere. So, long answer. Yes, you can probably do it. No, you shouldn't. So with the empty directory, once you put the get ignore file in there, wouldn't it no longer be empty? Right, but you want something in the get ignore file itself, generally. Okay. So, which, I mean, so what it basically it turns into is you do want to ignore everything in that directory because the only stuff in that directory is the stuff you're building. So what you basically want, but you can't just do dot get ignore star because then it will ignore the dot get ignore file itself and you'd be back where you started. So that's where you have to tell it, ignore everything but make an exception for myself. And those are the things where you could, you could probably also make an exception that says ignore this previous statement in the dot get ignore file. But like I said, there's a time and a place to use it. Empty directories is fine. Overriding something in a higher level get ignored. You probably just need to change your top level thing. Questions on not doing version control. We can see how much of the time we can spend not putting things in the Git. Because that's what this class is about. All right. 